Another decorative painting technique that you can use the woolly for is a stippling technique. Now before you do the stippling technique, you're going to want to apply a satin finish base coat to your surface. Also, you're going to want to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. So watch this next portion of the video on how to choose paint colors. When you're using glazes to create your faux finish, you need to have a base coat of a satin finish paint on your wall. In this particular situation, I'm going to choose this as my base coat. So I'm going to roll this color on the wall. From there, we need to choose a contrasting color that we'll mix our glaze out of. Now that color can be either lighter or darker than this. It should be three shades either lighter or darker than your base coat color. So in this situation, I'm going to choose one, two, three shades deeper than my base coat color. And that's the color I'm going to mix my glaze. Now that you know how to choose your paint colors, let's have you watch how to mix your glazes. In order to do your faux finish, you will be using a glaze. A glaze is translucent paint that's designed to dry slowly. When you're using glazes to create your faux finish, you have two options. You can either buy pre-mixed glazes. Those are glazes that have color in them already. Or if you choose, want to customize a color to create a glaze, then you can do that. How this is done is by purchasing a gallon of faux glazing liquid and combining it with a quart of paint. The ratio is four parts glaze to one part paint. Put it together and mix it up and you have a glaze. So now we've rolled our base coat of a satin finish paint on the wall. We've chosen our glaze color. We've mixed our glaze. What more is there to do before we actually begin stippling? There's just one more thing. If you're working with a brand new woolly, you'll want to get rid of any unnecessary lint on it before you begin. That's done with regular masking tape. You're going to take a piece, wrap it around your fingers, leaving the sticky side on the outside. Then take the woolly and take the masking tape and pull off any unnecessary lint on there. Now remember, you only need to do this once before you begin painting. You'll never need to do this again. So now the woolly's all ready to go. And for the stippling technique, if you're working on a large surface area, it's best to work with two people. The best way to do that with two people is to have one person applying the glaze with a roller and the next person following behind stippling with the woolly. So for this, I'm going to introduce you to Amber. Come on over, Amber. And she's actually going to apply the glaze to the surface and I'm going to follow right behind. So you're ready to go? Yep. Okay, great. Amber's paying close attention to making sure that her glaze goes on nice and even and smooth. She's going to roll a couple of rolls, just enough to get ahead of me so that I have the ability to follow behind her. And we should be able to move at the same pace where I move rapidly behind Amber. That way the glaze will be able to stay wet so we can do the entire wall from edge to edge without any breaking points. So that looks like a reasonable amount of area to cover first. So while Amber goes ahead to add more glaze onto her roller, I'm going to follow up with the woolly. And I'm going to take the woolly and I'm just going to begin tapping by stippling. And this is our most subtle technique. Stippling is an age old technique created for a wall. It's very subtle, but it is fantastically beautiful. Many people refer to this technique as antique to leather. So if you see in magazines or things like that where walls are done with an antique leather look, this is the type of look that they're doing on the wall. Now that goes really rapidly. You can also use a rag. If you find that the woolly is become saturated with the glaze, use the rag to download some of that glaze. Now Amber is going to go ahead and add more glaze and I'm just going to follow behind her. It goes really quickly. I'm taking the harsh line and tapping it away down to nothing. If you'll notice when I'm doing this, I don't need to rotate the woolly because it really doesn't leave an impression. It also doesn't matter if I hit it hard or light. 
Assuming that light is probably a better idea. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is an extremely subtle technique, and it is very elegant. But because I'm sure it's very difficult to see on camera, we're going to zoom you in so you get to see what it really looks like up close. See how the blaze gets broken through the color and you can see the little jabs? That's what stippling should look like. So that's the stippling technique, and it is very quick, very beautiful, and a lot of fun. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my friend Amber who gave me a hand by rolling on the glaze. And thank you for watching the stippling technique. It just doesn't get any easier than this.